Okay guys, today we're back again and we are going to create a dungeon which will be the location that our two adventurers are going to go and explore at some point. I'm a fan of working backwards. We start with the last part and we see how we can build a path towards there. So for this, we're going to need some graph paper. I already have dungeons made up that I could use, but I'd like to make a new one, I think. I think that would be enjoyable to do and record. So we're going to need our trusty mechanical pencil. We're going to need a copious amount of dice. We're going to probably need at some point to ink all this stuff in. And most importantly, we're going to need something to give us direction. So for this, let's start off with the Tome of Adventure Design. This is a great, fantastic book filled with all kinds of inspiration for the DM who would rather spend a thousand years coming up with ideas. So let's see. I think that we should take a look at one twenty six dungeon design. Since that's what I want to do anyway. Here we go. So, I already know that I want a dungeon, but I don't know what's happening in there. So why don't we do that? We're gonna figure out the big picture of what happened in our dungeon, why this place became dangerous. So we're going to need our old friend's percentage dice. And that looks like a 99. Let's see here. So this became dangerous because raiding began. What is that? 29. So raiding began because Forbidden knowledge. How long ago did this happen? 52. 10 years ago. Okay. Put this incense a little further away. So whatever this place was, it's been getting raided because something that wasn't supposed to be found out was found out. Huh. That's kind of interesting. So why don't we work with that? Why don't we come up with something that was in there that wasn't supposed to be found out? Let's do this again. Let's get these dice. 80, 2. So 82 says, 
A symbol of authority. What was the item? What else about it? How is it related to the location? 49 was created here. hundred years ago. That almost sounds like a holy symbol was made here. And no one was supposed to know about it. Oh dear. What kind of deity would not want its holy symbol to be found out? Probably one that didn't want its existence to be made aware of or its plans to be made aware of i'm just going to go down to the classic evil god route because that is a tried and true fantasy trope a hundred years ago in this temple without anyone knowing a holy symbol was made for an evil deity and it was hidden by the temple until about 10 years ago, when someone found out about its existence, someone who worships that evil deity, and now they want it real bad. Yes, this adventure is gonna be called Well, maybe that won't be the name of the adventure, but that'll definitely be the name of the dungeon, what it used to be. This is the Temple of the Sun God. But who was the icon made for? <clears throat> well, in my world, I have four apocalypse deities, but those things are really, really powerful. Let's go and get that and take a look. Who could we use from our list of deities who would be useful? Well, the Molech. Okay, so I have stolen this name, the Molech, from the Bible because of course I will. As far as I'm concerned, if Persona does it, so can I. The Molech in my world is the god of evil intent, of corruption. He dwells just below the surface of everyone because everyone's capable of evil. And the Molech, um, I'm gonna think, I'm gonna say he's the perfect antagonist for this. So let's see. We need, we need a leader of the, of the cult of Moloch. Okay. So the cult of Moloch is the ones who have been raiding the temple of the sun god, looking for this icon. Cult of Molech. Okay, that's a start. That's a start. So why don't we figure out how big our dungeon is? We're going to roll this. We're going to add three. 
And this is the total number of rooms in our dungeon. So this is 13 rooms total. Now, a good dungeon is going to have multiple levels. You're not going to finish it in one sitting. So why don't we keep in mind that we have 13. Let's get another die. We'll do 5 and 5 and 3. We'll just keep these here to remind us that we have 13 rooms. The first level of the dungeon is going to have this many rooms. Only four. Only four. Which makes me think that it's going to have kind of a basic layout. Maybe it's on the top. Maybe this is the very top. Let's make our four rooms just be... This. Here's our start room. We'll put another room over here. We'll make this one smaller. We're going to put one down here. this and we'll get one smaller one right here so now we got to pick one of these for the entrance and I'm thinking that I want to make this one bigger already because nothing says they have to be equal sized just that there is four of them Alrighty, so now we need to figure out which ones are connected to which. And to do that, we got to figure out which is our start room. So we have used up four rooms of our 13. That gives us nine left. Let's say that the entrance is this little guy right here. We'll have a doorway going in. And we can have these rooms be part of a larger structure. Maybe this is a marble temple at the top of a hill. Maybe these are big pillars. rooms are enclosed but the rest of this area is open we'll do it like that it seems pretty okay to me big conical kind of closed up area outside thick marble walls surrounding the temple and pillars to hold it up In fact, this can be room one. All of this right here, and this is 
just kind of platform and they step down into this area so they walk in through here here's this platform area with walls and they step in to here this is our room one this whole area right here and these are our three extra rooms so probably we need to nig uh, make out what each of them is, but we can leave that for later. Let's pick one for now that's going to lead us downstairs. One, two, three, four. We can get a four sided die. One, two, three. This is where our stairs are going to be. Stairs down. We got nine rooms left to work with. Let's roll this up and ignore any number that's higher than, well, there are our nine rooms. Okay. So let's look to the book for inspiration of how to lay this out. I know for a fact that there is a table on how to lay out dungeon. Here we go. Okay. 75. This says a connecting corridor forms a square, circle, or rectangle. It surrounds an internal area. About half the rooms are enclosed by the corridor and the other half enter onto the outside wall of the corridor. Okay, so we have nine rooms. And this is saying that there is a corridor that encloses an inside area. Half of the rooms are outside, half of them are inside. So let's do that. These are our stairs. So let's keep this in mind. Let's do like this. If you can't see what I'm doing, it's because the camera is pointed slightly too far away. So I could do like this, I suppose. Whoopsie doodle. Just like that, I guess. There we go. I guess. So here's our corridor. We're going to make our corridor be like this. So there's our corridor, the square one. Let's put the stairs here. And these stairs go up. And they're connected, these two things. All right, so let's see. We have nine rooms to work with. Let's see how many are inside. Four rooms on the inside. Can we split this into four evenly? I'm not sure. Maybe I won't even try. Maybe I won't even try to split up even. One, two, three, four. One, two. One, two, three, four. Those are our four rooms. Okay. How many are on the outside? Three. Let's see. Whoops. 
whoopsie doodle. I said whoopsie doodle. I'm a grown ass man. I said whoopsie doodle. That's horrible. We could, we could just make this completely symmetrical. So there's four in here, there's four here, and we're gonna put one extra big one right here. So now we gotta figure out doors. Let's put some doors in. This underground area is where this is leading to the same room isn't it why don't we do like this and then we can put this here secret door i'm adding in rooms because why not who's gonna stop me we can have some of these rooms only reachable by other rooms, we could do that. This looks like a double door to me. It's a big area. Do it like this. Do it like that. So now let's connect some of these rooms to each other so that we have a little bit of a loop. Because right now the central loop is this literal band right here which connects everything. But, 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 what if we had different kinds of connectors? What if we had... What if we had secret tunnels or corridors? ways that the old clergy of the sun goddess could use to move around safely in the event of a siege which is what happened which means that this probably wasn't very useful at all but they still exist that means we have another exit somewhere upstairs So if this is here, let's see. These two are connected right here. So if this is here, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That means that over here somewhere in this area is another way to get in. Another entrance to the dungeon we'll figure that out later but that's interesting to know let's move the camera so we can see the whole thing okay let's put some more secret tunnels here maybe maybe like this Those are our secret entrances. They both lead from this big chamber to different parts. So now let's give these things purpose. This is, we'll label these for now, we can do that. Let's do that. Let's go 
call this number one, number two, number three, number four. These are the rooms of the upper level. And we come down here. I want to give a name to this. We're going to give it five. This is five. This corridor is five, six, seven. So we're only up by two, and that's because I added this room, and I gave this corridor its own room. So we're still on target for the amount of rooms we used. This is all right so far. This is not bad. Why don't we figure out who these raiders are? And we can do that by consulting our monster manual. This is going to be, I'm going to say this is going to be a level 2 dungeon. This is a little harder. 17. So, one of the things I rolled out, we're going to write down our list. Giant. Black Widow, Spider. Okay, so we know that the first thing on our list are Black Lizard Spiders, Black Widow Spiders, and there's about D three of them. So we'll roll this and do it in half. So two. What works well with spiders? Well, you know what? We might pull out another book. I mean, I think I already know what I want to use. I think I want to use drow. Drow. Maybe the Moloch is worshipped by the drow in my setting. Okay. So we have drows. We have giant black widow spiders. Now we need an ecosystem. Maybe. Huh. Does my game have cockroaches? Let's find out. And if not, we're going to go find some and put them in. Carcass crawler, that sounds cool. And it's also a thing that would feed off dead things. And the black widows could probably eat it too. And how many do they come? Number appearing? Three. Okay, so let's try this. So two. Two of these guys. No, this book does not have giant cockroaches. But you know what? I want damn giant cockroaches. So let's go to another book. Oh. This won't fail me. This is the basic fantasy guide. The basic field guide for basic fantasy. This is another great system. I highly recommend it. Mainly because um, it's similar to old school essentials, but way more affordable. Here we go. Look at this. We want giant cockroach. So in the our game, 
there's going to be a layer of them, 2d8 of them. So we want two eight-sided dice, and we've got seven. That's almost maximum cockroach. This is one awful place. Giant cockroach. And there's seven. We should figure out how many drow are in our game. I imagine since it's uh like it's being raided, there's quite a few, so let's do I'm not gonna do that, that's ridiculous. But let's do something similar. Let's do a twenty and a ten. So there are a total of fifteen drow. So there's four monsters on our encounter list. Let's see. What else could we have? Well, let's go back to the rules of our game. Let's see. What the drow probably need people that they're helping that are helping them right they're not just working completely on their own or or they have slaves oh yes let's do elves there are about five captured elves who are slaves some kind of normal animal that's going to eat these things. Giant shrews. The giant shrew would be big enough to occupy the tunnels, make tunnels of its own, and feed off of the giant cockroaches and carcass crawlers and black widows. So let's see, how many appear? There's 1d8 in their lair. A total of eight giant shrews. So there's our encounter table. We have giant black widow spiders and drow. We have carcass crawlers. We have giant cockroaches, elves, and giant shrews. We can occupy this temple with them as we need. Let's take a look. <clears throat> What's going to be occupying the upper level? Why don't we roll? Take inspiration. The upper level is going to have the pair of carcass crawlers. Okay. Where are we going to stick it? This room. Okay. Maybe they're here feeding on the remains of some unfortunate adventurers who were here before. So there are both our carcass crawlers on the top. What else is on the top? A couple of drow. Let's do like this. Maybe one, one drow, just one. We can put him guarding this area right here. Times two, two carcass crawlers. The drow's in here. So we'll leave that for the top because we want them to feel confident enough to go down to the bottom. Let's see. Giant cockroaches. Let's put a couple here in this corridor thing. These giant cockroaches patrol the hallway looking for remnants of good meal. Or maybe they're under control of the drow. Who knows? There's all sorts of questions as to why the ecosystem is the way it is. I want to say that the drow are controlling the giant cockroaches and the black widow spiders. But that's it. 
The carcass crawlers are just there on their own. They're an unfortunate thing that just came by. The giant shrews lived here already. And the elves are slaves of the drow. That's how we'll play it. So let's see. Five. Where are the elves being held captive? Where are the elves being held captive? Let's put them here. Let's put a couple of elves here. All five of them? Okay. So there's five elves here who are being held captive. If we roll up a random elf encounter, it's um, some slaves who are running around doing some menial tasks. But we'll say these are special ones that can be rescued. Okay. Where are our giant shrews? 15. You know what? The tunnels, that's a good place for them to be because then they can get around as they need. Giant shrews? Is that all of them, though? Let's find out. There's about four of them in here, which leaves four remaining. Let's put some giant shrews in here, too. They get out from over here. So the giant shrews come in and out of the dungeon using this system of holes and tunnels. And they come into this dungeon to eat. And that's that's their whole story. <clears throat> so what we have left, we have 12 drow remaining. Let's put some drow in the corridor here, draw. And let's put a D10's worth of them. Seven. Seven drow patrolling the corridor along with the cockroaches. Almost like weird ass hounds that they're using. So we have one here and seven here, eight. We have seven remaining that we can put down. Let's roll again. There's five in here, drow. Five, and that means there's two left. So I'm going to put them in here. Okay. So after a couple of die rolls, we have a layout that we're going to use. Probably that icon that's hidden is being held by the shrews and the reason they can't find it is because it's in their tunnels yes let's do that let's do that we'll make this room completely unreachable except by this tunnel here and we'll put the treasure here we're going to use a different color pencil now we're going to use this orange. We're going to put some treasure on. Let's put treasure in this room. Let's put some where the carcass crawlers are. Maybe a little here. And we should put some wherever the drow are. And where the giant shrews are, there might be some. get our doors situated. These are doors. It's not looking bad. It's not looking bad. Let's take a look at this here. So 
So this is our first level. This is our second level. And from the second level, there's two ways to get in. There's the entrance in this room here. And then there's the other one out in the wilderness somewhere that the shrews use. All right, guys. Next time we tune in, we're going to make the starting town and the surrounding wilderness. And we'll actually give it a try. We'll try to play. We'll take our two characters. Um, oh, right. Here they are. We'll take Willoughby. And we'll take Theo. And they're on a quest to recover this ancient evil artifact from the Temple of the Sun God. That seems like a great way to start a game. Okay, until next time.